another picture it was just a picture of a dog one of those beagle like with the long ears and the droopy eyes you know and he was he was laying on a rug laying out flat and mm -hmm. it and the caption said please don't take me for another walk <laughs> <laughs> Mm. <laughs> you're going out. Can I borrow your dog? I need to go out. <laughs> another walk, another walk, another walk, another walk. <laughs> okay. So anyway. Uh, all right, so, Shannon, you want to share your screen again? I've got about 15 minutes where I'm gonna do a school run. It's supposed to be he not my son normally rides to school, but there's supposed to be really bad thunderstorms here. There's no oh. signs of them yet. Is there Cuba? Uh, okay. Yes, yeah, so this isn't because these what you're speaking about here is very similar and it might not be in your genius section, it might actually be in your mind section. Um, however, we're speaking in the context of, I guess, work with these problems that come up because I experience the same. Um, with awareness around it, like I said before, what are things you think you could? possibly do to avoid them happening or to address them in a way that when they happen there's a positive outcome for everyone yeah because i'm pretty quick these days i mean not when i was 30 or whatever but uh to say oh no i'm sorry you misunderstood that's not what i meant you know oh, whatever okay. and yeah. and sometimes sometimes that uh neutralizes the situation if it was like uh, you know but um but people are slow to give up their own idea of what they yeah. heard you know? yeah and so there's not always that's sometimes just none of your business if they can't say oh no that's okay yeah. that might have nothing to do with you so i'm most interested in figuring out what i can do to to not let that happen in the first place and yes people have told me you know oh well my own mother she told me i should drop my standards well that's not i'm not going to do that I, i'm not going to do that <laughs> oh, i think in my profile it does say let people know what to expect from you early on it could be in your mind but because mind and genius are so kind of closely linked we can go through this next time when we go we can touch on it um, because it's just you normally in these calls we'll touch on it on Thursday but it says let people know what to expect from you because we can do we can be quite direct and we will have standards and all of the things you mentioned before to let people know early on mm -hmm. Okay, so where are we? Oh, you you might need to move it down a bit, Shana. Oh, here's another one that's really great for you. It may be important for my career to reflect success and achievement, which might not apply as much, but as well as inspiring, guiding, or leading others. Mm. Yeah, that's. The best recruit allows me to be energetic. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, heaps of these are the same as mine. <laughs> yeah. I may be capable of far side thinking. Can wait for the right moment to act. Here's a diplomat one, though. I may be capable of far sighted thinking and can wait for the right moment to act. Mm. My caution may help ensure that things are done correctly and help me to avoid mistakes. That's a diplomat trait, which is great, great balance. For the activator in you. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I and that's true of me. Yeah, I I'm always thinking out there and trying to act in here, trying to bring people along. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And can you think of a time, say within the role that you're in now, that this has worked beneficially for you, being able to have that foresight? Well, with Peter, the the sponsor, the difficult person. Um, uh, things are getting a lot better, and I think over time, this has been my approach. Uh, it has been to make sure he realizes that no matter what I do, it comes from integrity, and it comes from wanting this club to be the best that it can be. Mm -hmm. Even if we disagree on what the item is, that I'm, I'm 
at first, I don't think he bought into that. You know, mm -hmm. he, I was like suspect. I was like, well, she'll be around for a month or two and then she won't, you know, she'll be gone or whatever. But, but now, I mean, he's told me several times, um, he's thanked me and in general, in general, and told me that he could not never have done this or gotten this far without me. Yeah. And, and uh, today we had a two hour meeting. At the last three Sundays, we've had a two hour meeting and it's just the two of us. And I'm really light, but I have an agenda. I have it written down right here. Yeah. But by the end of the two hours, I want to convince him that this is a more appropriate way to go than the way he's saying. And yeah. it's working, and it's working. So yeah. over a long time, this is this is doing good. You're building on all of your strengths here, by the sounds of it. Um, can you scroll up a bit, Shana? Um, I think you might have gone there. I may enjoy communicating. I thought we already looked at that one. We did. We've already gone through those. I've only gone one screen full. Oh, cool. Um, May do best. Oops. This is now oh, a new one. Version one. Is that the end now? Nope. So just the introversion one. Introversion. In the top. Irritable. Oh, no, no, no. So see the one at the bottom now, I'll just bring that one to the top. Oh, yeah. I may be able to work. Um, well, no, yeah. Oh, here we go. Will with my hands become quite accomplished in art, carpentry. Cooking, oh. I love cooking. I, mm. So keeping yeah. you busy, creatively busy. Yeah. Are yeah, you doing any of that? I can do when I'm frustrated or extra energy or whatever is activity, you know, fitness activity, run or something, uh, or cook. Yeah. Those are my outlets. Always right. have, always have that for the last 30 years anyway. Well, this one is um, an interesting one. I might be pessimistic and perplexed by things at times, making job seeking more difficult on me than others. Mm. You may feel confident knowing you did a job well done each day. So that may be something to consider with your workspace. Infrequent recognition of your efforts can leave you frustrated. Does that resonate with you at all? Yeah, that's my whole career has been like that, where it says you might be best thinking out of the box. Um, in fact, I often said to people after I got in my, um, my end job, the job I retired from, all, people would ask me, how did you get here? You know, in the U.S. Forest Service, and, you know, uh, agriculture, uh, environmental affairs, and da, 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 da. you know, when, when I was in um, international relations and um, uh, recreation administration, <laughs> you know, how did you, how did you get from there to here, you know? And I mean, I could see exactly how I did it because I did it. It didn't happen. I did it. Mm -hmm. And for instance, when I was in Alaska, I, I uh, had a big job for the governor for four years and he went out of office and I went out of office too. And uh, so I didn't know what I was going to do and I didn't really worry about it. I went on a vacation. I went to Egypt for six weeks and wandered around and whatever. I came back and my phone's ringing off the hook and I, yeah, sure, I can help you. Sure. You know, within a few months, I was a consultant and I didn't even know it, you know. And so, okay, so then for the next eight years, I had my own consulting business and um, I, it was all about marketing. I mean, and I'm a great marketer. I mean, I, I told, <laughs> I've, I've told so many people, you make me a janitor, I'll be marketing with the mops in the closet. You know, I mean, I, that's who I am. I market, I don't market to sell. I, I'm, I, um, because I've worked for government and nonprofits uh, almost my entire life and, uh, and I market for service, you know, yeah, right. I, market, 
a market for connection and service and community development and those kinds of things. You know, I put things together. I put things and put people together and put ideas together, um, that kind of thing. That's what I do. And so I found having my own business, I had to market all the time. I became a junkie for every time there was a group of people over 12, I was in it, you know, different receptions and business meetings and this luncheons and da 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 da, you know, and I was, I was always there. And, and so I saw that, and, and yet I'm an, an environmentalist and an outdoors enthusiast and all of that, you know. So I, um, I saw an ad in the paper for the Alaska Environmental, no, the Alaska Wilderness Guides Association, looking for executive director. And I called up the guy, George, and I said, Dave, hey, what's it about? And he said, well, we don't have very much money, you know. We only have nine guides, but we are statewide, and you know we need a lot of help and stuff. And uh, I said, and he said we can only pay you, I don't know, something ridiculous like five hundred dollars a month, and uh, you'd have to have the office in your home and and uh, that, that. And and so I said, well let me think about this. And of course, I didn't think about taking the job. I thought about making a proposal to them. Mm -hmm. So the next week, I invited the board of directors of the Alaska Wilderness Guide Association over to my home for coffee. And I made a presentation to them of how I could be their contract director and sure. what, I would do for, what I would do for them, you know, and that they wouldn't keep track of how many hours a week or a month that I worked, they would just give me their, I think it was a thousand dollars a month, which in Alaska was nothing. <laughs> but anyway, just give me your thousand a month and give me a 15 hour um, woman uh, or person to come and do the files and telephoning and I'll keep everything in my house and I will triple your membership I will get you a, a insurance policy. I will influence the, um, I will write and influence the legislation in the Alaska legislature next term to get uh, guiding districts, which is what they wanted. Um, and we'll have receptions for legislators and we'll do this and we'll do this and we'll do this. And they were like, <laughs> and so I was, by by contract, it was one of many contracts that I had at any given time. For the next three years, I was the director of the Alaska Wilderness Guides Association. And I did all those things. They went from nine um, guide, guide company members to, I think, 43. And, oh, so they, went, and they went from uh, 30 individual guide members to something like 150. Yeah, so you're easy to do for that. <laughs> and, and we, uh, you know, I started schools, um, schools for them for trainings for uh, CPR and, and EMT training, the guides needed. And, and uh, um, I, I did some um, avalanche rescue uh, trainings. And so, you know, I just find the teacher and do a workshop and they get a certificate and you know all this kind of stuff and i i negotiated with an insurance company to get a blanket in, insurance for all of their businesses at a at a i mean like 10 times lower rate than they were they were paying and and i made a brochure that included all of the companies not just one company and, and I gave that brochure to the state tourism office. And when people call Alaska and say, we want to come on vacation here, you send them this brochure, which advertises all of our wilderness guides. And they can do custom trips for you and your family and blah, blah, blah. You know, and I did all those things. And I had a blast doing it. And, um, and they gave me free trips. They gave me three free trips for two every year. So I got nine free trips. Wow. And if you can see here, in here, it actually says in your profile, you may be passionate about what you do. 
<laughs> and what you believe we're in, which may lead to opportunities for you. And so <laughs> yeah. you, maybe best for you, well, in a non-profit organisation you believe in or a company that helps in some way. So you've actually just told a story about that point there. Yeah, yeah. And I, uh, I, I don't know if, if, I don't even know if you know, Sharna, do you know that I uh, was a competitive sled dog racer in Alaska? Yeah, yeah. I've got yes. that on your file. <laughs> so I, had, I had a kennel with uh, 90 dogs. And, uh, and at first it wasn't mine. And I had a friend and uh, I, I said, he said, you want to come out and train with us, see what this is like. And I said, oh yeah, you know. So I went out and then I went out and then I went out and I went out and I loved it. You know, I went out and went out and he says, oh, you look pretty good. You look pretty good. You want to, you want to drive dogs for me this year? And by January 1st, he put me in a race and, <laughs> and I raced for the next nine years. Well, he was a, a, a famous person in Alaska in dogs. You know, he, mm. he started the Iditarod race. Uh, um, he was the marshal for all these races all over the bush and on the Yukon and all this stuff, you know, and his name is, his name is famous and he's, he, not, he died shortly after I left Alaska, he, he died young and they named the track after him and, you know, all this kind of stuff. So anyway, it was very, um, I don't know if decimated is the right word, but that's the word that comes to mind. All these little villages all over had had races and they wanted to get the people to bring their dogs because that would bring sponsorships and that would bring money to the villages and to the drivers and all that kind of stuff. And it wasn't happening, nothing was coordinated. So I just said to Dick, my kennel partner, why don't we start a club? So I started the Alaska Sled Dog and Racing Association and um, we ended up with 600 members. And when I got my, <laughs> when, I got my <laughs> when I got my job and, and we, we charged them $10 a piece. I mean, they didn't have money, you know, we charged them $10 a piece. But then we took that and went out and got sponsors. Yeah. And, and then I, I was a lobbyist. So I went to the legislature. And then when I got my job for the governor, I had my own money for trails in Alaska, trails in Alaska. And I said, how much of this is going to the sled, sled dog trails? Zero. I said, well, that's a travesty. So I, so I took about $400,000 and, and gave it out to the different villages and said, go maintain your trails, set up your trails and stuff you know, for the dog races. And, and we coordinated the, the skate. You're not gonna get, you're not going to get anybody to come to your race if there's three other races in three other communities on the same day as yours, you yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> and so we coordinated, you know, one, one, the villages would all turn in their schedules and we'd put it out as this, this year's schedule, you know? And, mm -hmm. and 600 members later, you know? Right. Do you want to quickly go through a couple more points in your profile? I've got to get my son to school very soon. But thank you for telling us. I think that um, Toastmasters... I'm very enthusiastic about Oh, I can tell. I think Toastmasters have the right lady on their books. <laughs> oh, it's okay. There's only this last one, really. And this is just letting you know as an activator, there are times when you need to rest. So just rest when you need to. Yeah, when when the when our president left the other day and and I and I and I got so anxious and everything, I just thought, you know, I think I need two weeks off. Yes. So it's just letting you know there's there'll be times when you don't have a lot of energy and it might make you say, Oh, do I want to do this or not? So it's just I think you should. Um, I don't I think you should still do it, but just be aware that there'll be times when you need to rest. So there'll be times when you have high energy, times when your energy is not so high, and when it's not so high, be okay with that. Mm. Okay. Has there been times when energy is well? We know the energy has been up and down a little bit recently, yeah. 
Yeah, and and it was always the case. It was always the case, and I think in my career, especially the last, I was only with the U.S. Forest Service the last uh, thirteen years. Yeah, I went there middle management. So, well, it really just goes but, to show you that that's was, natural for you. It gives you that understanding that it, that's a natural flow for you to be up and down. Mm. Yeah, and also to just create so much. So I think, like I said, yeah. Postmasters have the right lady on on board. Um, so I think it's definitely the right thing for you to be doing. Yeah, and that was the that was the path of my career. Like I said, I created, and uh, even when I got when I did get into a job, uh, I was either the first person to have that job, or they changed, in, including my big job for the governor of Alaska. Um, I was the first woman in the nation to head up um, a state park system. Mm. And while I was in that job, I created the largest state park in the world at a million and a half acres. And I did that through legislation because I'm a lobbyist as well. But when, when I, when I got in there, it, there, there was no director of state parks. There was a director of land that also handled state parks. And yeah, then, they, so I was the first person, you know, and, and likewise, my very first job in this field, when I was in Spokane, I was 23 years old, um, and my boss uh, ran around the Northwest hiring because the city council gave him money to hire three supervisors, recreation supervisors. And he wasn't sure what they were going to do. And he hired three of us. We all showed up on March 1st or whatever it was. And he said, do something. I mean, music to my ears. <laughs> and seven years later, when I left that job, I had 16 supervisors working under me because I had opened three centers for the handicap and hired a supervisor for each one. I had opened three centers for senior citizens and hired a super, I had to open um, a craft center. I had, you know, and I, I'd start these programs and then I'd hire a supervisor to take them over and then I'd go start another program. I mean, for seven years, I was just creating, 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 creating. I mean, it was absolutely incredible. Well, I feel like you've got so much then to be able to really take what you're doing with Toastmasters and potentially grow communities and grow a lot more. I mean, it sounds to me like you are the most qualified person to be facilitating this into more. And when people get upset with you that you may be more direct than things like that, it's more about reassuring them that you're, you're capable of doing all of this and you're doing them a favour and, and really reminding them that this is your genius, like this is you thriving and maybe asking them questions of how you can work together or how you can communicate together better. Ask them what they need in communication. Ask them what they need to not feel threatened by you because this is your genius zone. You know, there's, there's things like that that you could do that would potentially give people that opportunity to build that relationship and trust with you because you are, you are in your element. Yeah. Well, I say that, but on the other hand, you know, I try to be a little bit low key and everything that I do is, is everything that I present is a suggestion. Yeah. Not a, not as, this is the way. And I didn't, uh, I didn't take the president's job, you know, and the thing is the, the guy that's the sponsor that came down here to, to start this club is from Canada and he's a 23 year Toastmaster. And the people and the people that we attracted, um, of all the people we attracted, there are only three that have ever been a Toastmaster at all, and the longest one was three years. Right. And he wasn't current. And mm. so and so I'm not a Toastmaster. So this guy from Canada my my job, which I defined very early on and never told a soul was to um, be the sounding board for Medellin, the Spanish culture, um, the, the sign of the times once COVID-19 came around and how this community, you know, community development and community kind of stuff, which I am really good at, um, 
how to interpret all of that to Peter because he says, no, Toastmasters doesn't do it that way. Toastmasters doesn't do it that way. And he wants a little Ottawa club in Medellin, Colombia, you know, and everybody, and I'm saying, no, 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 you know. So, so I had that hidden agenda still, you know, and now I'm seeing that with these last three Sunday meetings with him, I'm seeing the two of us being much more, um, cordial yeah. and him asking actually asking me questions what do you think about this or how should we handle this Angela and yeah. he never did that before he never did that before progress looks like you're definitely infiltrating the forces with your magic <laughs> and just trust in the process I guess it's just that reminder that as much as we want things to be now and everything to be perfect right now there is the teasing progress progress there is the the adolescence, the, the childish, you know, behaviors that come as we grow and mature and learn about each other and, and grow into this beautiful relationship. So just trust in the process and trust in the time. And I think that is the biggest message at the moment is give it just a little bit more time and watch it or allow it to show itself how it needs to be. You're doing one, all the work. And one thing about Peter, and he says about Toastmasters, but, but it's also true about himself, and that is he has a very live and let live attitude. I mean, mm. even, even when the president left and even when the president gave, took all the money out of the treasury and gave it back to the individuals who had paid it, which mm. just burned my soul, you know, Peter says, let bygones be bygones, you know, he's not here anymore, just don't deal with it, you know. Yeah. And, and this is a volunteer organization. We don't push anybody, you know. We don't. We don't. Um, we don't tell them, you know, that we want you to do this or we don't want you to do that, you know. And we don't ask them for money, and we don't. We, you know, just live and let live. Live and let exactly. live. So, um, you know, I think maybe in the beginning he saw me as a hard head knocker uh although at the beginning we weren't we were only dealing with ourselves we weren't dealing yeah yeah anyway anyway so that's good yeah. okay so sharna there's another meeting tonight in three hours yes uh or no no not not during the day nope that one's finished so now it's just the these ones here morning and, and evening no, in our time no 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 our little group the uh, lunchtime 12 31 the Katie and, and yeah no they're now a part of this so they will they jump onto these ones on Monday and Friday as uh, so Monday and Thursday they jump onto these ones now okay so there's no meeting tonight no. oh yay because I was gonna say I really don't have time to go to it okay great <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how much longer are these meetings is it gonna oh, be I think about thirty days or yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, re we're rounding up into a, a new phase or a new aspect in the next couple of weeks, so. Yeah, I, I can't remember if this is week three or week four. It feels like... Four, oh. I think it's week... We're in week four, four. start of week four. Yeah. yeah. So this is our last week and then we'll start a new one, but we'll let, be sure to let you know. Okay, will it be the same Monday, Thursday? We're not sure. Okay. We may change the time from morning to the 12.30ish time. So instead of being 9 a.m., we may make it 12, 12.30, which is what the other group was. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, no. so, so there's one more meeting for this. Yeah. yeah, and we can go through the mind section a little bit more with you then if you like, or whatever you like, because it's just you on these calls. So we can go through the mind or whatever <laughs> it is, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, Thank okay, you perfect. so much. Thank you. Morning. It was wonderful hearing all your stories. I've got to get my son to school now. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. All right. See you on Thursday. Or See you on Wednesday. Ciao. <laughs> yeah. well, uh, uh, Sharna, can you tell Anne, or what's up to Anne, that name that you said, that naturopath name that you know? Sheree. Sheree, yeah, yeah. 
Do, do you recommend her? Do you know her work? Well, I do, but I, I'm assuming that Anne would have chosen someone particularly. Like, Anne is very particular. So I would assume that it took her so long to find these persons because they have a certain attribute that she feels will be best for your requirements. Yeah, well, then just tell her that name and ask her to check them out because Angela said she hadn't gotten anywhere yet. <laughs> cool. No worries at all. Thank you very much. All right, good night. Good night, bye. bye. You, you're still recording.